Hello there, it's Greg and welcome again to Quick Tips. Today, love to share some ideas or some detail on actually how we build a sales process. The first thing I'm going to suggest we do is actually consider the timeline. Consider our potential or typical target client and look at their decision making criteria, their budgeting process, and then come up with an idea of how long your process needs to be. Now that's going to vary from business to business or from transaction to solution or sale, but it could be anywhere between two minutes to 10 minutes to two days to two weeks to two months. It doesn't matter which, we should determine the timeline. Here we've put one down, that's two weeks. Let's now look at the major steps. How many connections should we have either face to face or via Skype or telephone or email that are key connections within this process? You don't need to know what they are at the moment, but simply how many. Let's say in this instance we've built four. Now what we need to do as the third step is go back and work out what those steps should be. And we do that via brainstorming. What are all the possible reasons, and I'd love to see you come up with about 30, reasons to connect with a prospect. Valid reasons that will give them an excuse or a reason to talk to us, rather than just making that horrible follow-up call on our part. Having determined or isolated all those reasons to connect, now we should go through and pick the four that are most relevant because we've got four in this process. So in this case, we're going to say the discovery meeting, the scoping meeting, the proposal meeting, and then the experience meeting or demonstration, if you like. Now, two rules only. The first meeting must always be the discovery or qualifying meeting. We're there to find out about them rather than tell them about us. That allows us to put a solid proposal together. The second rule is that the proposal or quotation, if you like, meeting should never be the last meeting. Because if that's the last connection, you've got nothing left to do after that, but pick up the phone or get on the email and make that follow-up connection. You know the one. I'm re just ringing up to follow on up. See how you got on with that proposal. It doesn't work. Rather, we've got to have a step after it. So in this case, the demonstration meeting that gives us an excuse to go back and keep the momentum rolling and move to the close. Having done that, the next step and final step is to put all the detail in between or underneath, if you like, those key steps. What are the things that we do in those meetings? What do we do in the discovery meeting? What questions do we ask? Who do we include? All of that should be documented in your sales process. So there we go, a few ideas on how to build a simple but powerful sales process.